There may be more truth to a Nightmare on Elm Street backstory than you might expect. One of the most successful horror movies of all times, A Nightmare on Elm Street, written and directed by Wes Craven, was released in 1984. The film which is ranked amongst the highest grossing horror films of its era, tells the story of a group of teenagers fighting Freddy Krueger, a child killer who terrorizes kids to their dreams with a glove covered in knives. He enters teenagers' dreams and kills them there. But if they pass away in their dreams, they also pass away in real life. Now could the events depicted in the film be based on a true event? Well, according to Wes Craven, it was. He got the idea for the story after reading an LA Times article about a family who managed to escape from the Cambodian killing fields. The story was of a young refugee who survived the genocide in Cambodia, but unfortunately, it wasn't long after they arrived in the US that the small boy started having terrifying dreams. The child was afraid to go to sleep because he thought that in his nightmares, he would be attacked and killed and never wake up. The boy attempted to stay awake for days at a time, but eventually, he did fall asleep. According to Craven, they then heard cries in the middle of the night, but by the time they got there, he was already dead. He had died in his sleep during a nightmare. Now as bizarre as this story may sound, this was not a one-time occurrence. But before we go any further, let's take a look back in time at how it all began. Between 1975 and 1979, under the regime of Pol Pot, up to almost 3 million people were slaughtered during the four-year-long Cambodian genocide which was carried out by the Khmer Rouge. It was one of the most gruesome and horrific genocides in history. The Khmer Rouge fundamentally changed Cambodian society once they had gained control. Pol Pot desired an agricultural society. He declared the year to be the year zero and the old society was to be purged. All outside influences like city life, education, and Western culture were banned. In order to do this, residents of the city had to be evicted and relocated forcibly to the countryside, where they would be expected to work as farmers, producing crops and digging canals. A large number of minorities, particularly ethnic Chinese, Muslims from Cham, Buddhist monks, and anyone who might be thought of as even remotely intellectual, were hunted down and persecuted by the Khmer Rouge. People were even killed simply because they wore eyeglasses, as even they were seen as possible intellectuals. But as paranoia among Pol Pot and the top commanders increased, more and more people were dispatched to these remote fields. Once inside the killing fields, prisoners were massacred in large numbers. Their corpses would then be used as fertilizer. Another well-known practice was performing cruel medical experiments on prisoners. Their cruelty had no limits. A large number of survivors fled and sought sanctuary in refugee camps in Thailand. Many of these people ultimately came to the United States. Eventually, the Vietnamese forces invaded and destroyed the Khmer Rouge regime in Cambodia in January 1979, putting an end to the slaughter. By then, a new Cambodian government passed the Kree Law No. 1, which allowed Pol Pot to be tried for the crime of genocide. However, 
Paul Pot managed to flee and lived in relative freedom until 1997, when he died while placed under house arrest. Now this brings us back to what inspired Craven to make his film. After the invasion of the country by the Khmer Rouge in 1975, most of the Hmong refugees who were a small ethnic minority fled to the US. But the struggles persisted long after immigration. The hardships they had experienced in their country and the misery that they had to undergo left a large number of these people with severe trauma. But it was during this time that strange anomalies were reported. Throughout the late 70s and early 80s, Reports were made of generally healthy young Asian males and one female passing away mysteriously in their sleep. This was later known as the Sudden Unexplained Nocturnal Death Syndrome. Southeast Asia had the highest incidences of this fatal condition, with the majority being refugees fleeing the Vietnam War. Japanese, Indonesians, as well as Filipinos and Chinese Filipinos were among the Asian population who were affected. But a disproportionately high number of Hmong refugees were experiencing sudden deaths in their sleep. It is thought that Li Hua, an American-based Hmong physician, was the first person to have died from what was formerly known as Asian Death Syndrome. Since he was a healthy man, the social worker who knew him was shocked when he died in his sleep in 1977. The LA Times reported who was passing. Then there was the case of the Hmong male who came to the US with his wife and eight children from a refugee camp in Thailand, but only a short time after arriving in his new country. Yong Leng Tao, then 47, also passed away mysteriously in his sleep. And yet another similar incident was reported of a 29-year-old man named Jung To Chung was discovered dead in his bed in Portland, Oregon in 1981. Nothing about a sudden death related to sickness. Nobody knew what exactly was taking the lives of Hmong men while they were sleeping. There was no obvious cause of death discovered and none of them had been experiencing any kind of physical illness. But some people were stating that they had overheard victims describing having nightmares frequently in the days preceding their deaths. Numerous witnesses reportedly heard the victim scream or have respiratory problems just before they passed away. All that was known was that something was killing Hmong men in their sleep. But the question is, what? There was no clear reason on why 116 Hmong men and one woman died in the middle of the night. The Federal Centers for Disease Control were looking into why these young men, who seemed to be in good health, suddenly died while they were sleeping. The Laotian Hmong refugees in the US were chosen for the study because they had one of the highest rates of sudden death at night of any Southeast Asian refugee group. Studies have shown that stress and a structural abnormality of the heart's conduction system may be risk factors, according to the CDC. But the actual cause of deaths remained unexplained, as the physicians were not able to provide a specific explanation on what caused these fatalities. This was ultimately termed as the Sudden Unexplained Nocturnal Death Syndrome. There were, however, other explanations for this phenomenon. Some local residents thought that the deaths were caused by refugees being exposed to deadly nerve agents that were used during the war. But according to County Medical Examiner Dr. Larry V. Lumen, who spoke to the Los Angeles Times, he questioned why only men were afflicted by the nerve gas. Furthermore, why would it happen at night? He added that the nerve gas would have lost its effectiveness if it had taken years for it to start working and had not immediately affected people. Additionally, 
a professor by the name of Shelley Adler, looked into these occurrences. She had spent years studying the Hmong refugees and their relationship with what they called Dapso, a wicked spirit who they thought was to blame for the deaths. It's a spirit that takes the form of a jealous woman who haunts men when they're asleep. This evil spirit then entraps and crushes her victims. One Laotian man told Adler about his encounter with this creature. He described a black figure approaching him, going to his bed and covering his legs and feet. He said he had a heavy weight throughout his entire body. He felt like he was drowning and that his chest was frozen. Now this does sound eerily similar to the nightmares experienced by those suffering from sleep paralysis. Some people have described seeing terrifying beings, such as shadowy creatures sitting on the victim's chest and holding them down. This type of nighttime evil has appeared countless times throughout history and in a wide variety of cultures. For instance, if we take a look at European folklore, we will see that in Germanic and Slavic tales, Amara is an evil creature who terrorizes humans by riding on their chest as they sleep and causing them to have night terrors. Scandinavians had their own version of the account as well. According to the legend, a mare is an evil creature also referred to as a succubus or incubus, causing sleep paralysis. In other parts of the world, like some parts of South America, similar stories were told. According to Brazilian legend, Pisadera is a crone with long fingernails that prowls rooftops at night and steps on the chest of people who sleep with their belly up on a full stomach. While in Mexico, the person who is sleeping becomes immobile when a ghost lies down on their body. It is thought that the spirit of a deceased person is to blame for this. This is referred to as wearing a dead person. Likewise in the Middle East, in Arab culture it is known as Jathum, which translates to what weighs heavily on someone, the suffocator, also known as El Jathum in Arabic is a condition in which a person experiences the sensation of having a heavy weight fall on him while he is in the initial stage of sleep. People who have experienced this feel as if they have been squished and have trouble breathing, which make it hard to talk or move. It's been said that it feels like suffocating. Now as you can hear, the same pattern can be heard in many tales from all over the world. They are viewed in a number of ways, but in the end, they all tell a similar story. But Professor Adler offered her own theories as to what could have been causing these deaths in the middle of the night. She theorized that the mysterious deaths may be linked to sleep paralysis. It's possible that the Hmong people were so afraid of these dark forces that they unintentionally willed themselves to death because they truly believed that these wicked spirits could kill them in their dreams. When this happens, it's called the nocebo effect. Adler believed that Laotian immigrants' strong cultural belief in night monsters is what ultimately killed them. So in a nutshell, bad expectations can lead to bad outcomes. Now even though this argument could be correct, it's still strange that throughout history, people from across the world who have no prior connection to one another all have reported similar dreams of scary shadow creatures sitting on their chest while they sleep. These remarkably similar hallucinations then can be experienced by all of us? The events of this case are truly bizarre. Sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. In the end, it was these real events that ultimately led to the movie A Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs>